Welcome to our lecture online. To give us some more experience with op-amp circuits in second order equation situations, let's take a look at this fairly simple circuit. And all we have to do here is find the differential equation. Just come up with the equation to give us that experience. Notice that we have a node right here. And so we have current flowing into the node and current flowing out of the node. Now the current from here to the op-amp is virtually zero. Also the voltage at this point and let's call this V sub 1, so to speak. The voltage at this point is zero because the voltage difference across here is zero and it's then connected to ground, so the voltage there must be zero. Here we have a voltage supply providing the current through the resistor, so the current through here will be the difference in the voltage divided by the resistance. So that's the approach we're going to take. So let's take a look at node 1. And at node 1, we can say that the current into the node must equal the current out of the node. So in this case, I1 must equal I2. And I1 can be defined as the difference in the voltage, which is the voltage of the source, minus the voltage at 1, divided by the resistance, which is R1. And that must equal the current through that capacitor. So the current through the capacitor can be uh, written as the capacitance C, times dv dt. Now, we'll just write it the voltage across the capacitor because what is that equal to? Well, notice that it's going to be equal to the difference between v1 and the output voltage. So we can say that the voltage across the capacitor is equal to v1 minus the output voltage. And so that can go in here. And so we can then write that via the source minus V1 divided by the resistance is going to be equal to the capacitance times the DDT of V1 minus VO. Now, realizing what we said just before, we realize that V1 must equal zero. So we can say V1 is equal to zero because it's connected to the op amp. It's the difference between the, the difference of the voltage here is virtually zero and we can say that it's connected to ground so therefore that must equal zero. So we can simplify the equation where the source voltage divided by the resistance did I write? Yeah, I said, I said R1 is equal to and this will be zero so it will be C times the DDT of the negative VO and the negative can come in front so we can simply write this as the source voltage divided by R is equal to negative C times the derivative of the output voltage with respect to time. And then we need to come up with an equation to describe the output voltage across the inductor. And so we can say that the voltage across the inductor, which is equal to the output voltage, is equal to the inductance times the rate of change of the current with respect to time. Though which current is that? Well, it has to be the same current, which is the current here, I. And so we can then say that the output voltage equals L di dt. But we also have the derivative of the output voltage there. So there what we need to do is take the derivative of that. So we take dV output dt is equal to L times the second derivative of the current with respect to time. Then if we can plug that in here, now what we have is we have the source voltage divided by R minus C times what we have up there which is L times the second derivative of I with respect to time and finally if we want to isolate the differential term right here we bring that down here we can say that the source voltage divided by minus RCL is equal to the second derivative of the current through the inductor with respect to time. And there is a nice differential equation. We don't need to solve it, we just have to come up with the equation and that is how it's done.